Hi, this is Nancy Rolsima with On Point TV and Quilting with Nancy. Thank you for joining us today. We are on our fourth block in the sunset over Dublin. So that's the quilt behind me, just a quarter of it. The book has 39 different blocks. We won't be doing every one of the blocks, but we will be covering every technique in the book. So we first started with this block that had half square triangles. And I wanna point out that on this block, I pieced it in rows. The second block, we did the grid half square triangle. And with that one, I again pieced it in rows. There they are, going this way. The next block we did was the Clay's Choice block, and we did that with a pinwheel. So with the pinwheel, you create that first, add the second to the two sides, and then you add the two rows. So here's your two rows. This block is gonna be done a little bit differently. This block we will actually piece in quadrants. And I'm gonna show you about a new tool that I found called the Diagonal Seam Tape, and how that hooks up to your sewing machine. It's by Cluck Cluck Sew. Nice, interesting name. That must be the company. And you can purchase this on Fireside Quilts, just like you can purchase any of the other supplies that I've been using. So we're going to start with the three inch half square triangles. So we have four of the black, four of the blue, and eight of the yellow. And on the back of the yellow one, I have taken my friction pen again, because it's something I can see on the yellow, and I drew the diagonal. Now I have had some people comment, what is this that I'm cutting on? This is my OmniGrid mat. Now if I move my tools, you can see that the other side of it looks like what you would expect. That's an OmniGrid mat. What I love about them is the back side of them is just a solid, no lines, nothing to distract you. And because all of my measurements are done with a ruler, not with the lines on the mat, I don't usually use the lines on the mat very often. Now I've been doing this for 30 some years. If I'm working with the lines on the mat, they're just there, they don't distract me at all. I flip it over so that the lines don't distract you while we're watching the video, and you might want to try that at home. If the lines distract you with an OmniGrid mat, you can always use the solid other side. So I'm going to take these to my sewing machine. Now with these, it just occurred to me, because I'm going to show you how to use this diagonal tape, I don't need to draw those lines. So I'm going to erase all of those lines. So a stack of eight fabrics, Pretty sure that'll disappear. Ah, it didn't go all the way through. Let me go about, it disappeared, made them, it erased um, at least five layers of um, the lines because that's a friction pen. So now I'm gonna go. So I'm taking with the diagonal tape. So with this diagonal tape, the idea is that you wanna line it up so that the center line is with the needle. Now this would be a really nice option for those of you that don't have a sewing machine whose needle can go to the other side. So with this, I'm just right having it straight to the front. The red line is lined up with my needle. These black lines are the quarter inch. And I have found with working with this that just inside to, to the inside of the black line, is the scant quarter inch. So you can try this and just see if this works for you. So I'm gonna take the blocks, put them right sides together, and with this, I'm going to line up the point on the inside of that scant quarter inch line, and then look down here at the bottom. Down at the bottom, I'm gonna line that up, and I'm not looking at my needle. I am looking down here at the bottom. I'm making it so that that point will travel all the way up inside that line. Then when I grab my second one, and this is what will kind of be confusing to you, I like to go to the other side. So now I'm gonna have that point line up to the inside of the left hand stripe, and then watch down here at the bottom. That's what I pay attention to. And then I can go back and forth, this time lining it up to the right hand line and paying attention down here to the point. So this is a really quick technique. I have found that I've been able to really make my blocks a little bit faster by using this diagonal seam tape. Now, it's not for everybody. 
if the, and I'm not sure what it is that makes it work for some people and not for others, but if this does not work for you, keep in mind you want to do it more than once before you've decided that it doesn't work for you. If it doesn't work for you, well then you can just go back to drawing the lines on either side. You also then could use it for your quarter inch seam guide, making sure that guide goes all the way down your machine so the tape would not go to waste. But I recommend you maybe give this a try because it really does go a lot faster going back and forth. So I'm going to continue piecing this. I'll get these all pieced on both sides and then we'll go back to trimming them into half square triangles. There, I have all my half square, square triangles pieced using that diagonal seam tape. I really like it. I won't use it all the time. I want you to see different techniques of doing it, but give it a try. I think it goes a little faster. I've taken and cut them in half, and at this point, I want you to pay attention to the pressing solution on the pattern. I'm always going to tell you which direction to press. So for the pieces that have yellow and blue, I'm going to press toward the blue. For pieces that have yellow and the background, which remember my background is black, I'm going to press toward the black. And there should be eight of each of those. When I'm done with the pressing of them, then I will show you another way to trim them down into a perfect half square triangle. So all my half square triangles are pressed in the direction that I needed them. And I'm going to show you another way to trim these down. This is a kind of cool way to use these little rulers. So I've got my half square triangle, my two and a half inch ruler, because that's the size I need it to be. I'm going to put some double stick tape on the seam in the back. And then I like to put my fingers on it a little bit so it's not too sticky. You don't want it to be too sticky. Then take it with your half square triangle and make that diagonal line right on the seam, the diagonal seam, and kind of center it up. So now it'll stick to it. Now using your rotary cutter, you can cut one side, then spin the mat, cut the next side, spin the mat, and cut all the way around. Now this is a very nice technique for people that are a little shaky. If your hands are a little shaky when you're doing this, um, when you're trimming things up, this is a technique that is going to make it so that it won't matter. You can shake all you want, but with the tape on the back of the ruler, even if you're shaking, it's not going to go anywhere. And I love this little mat because I can just put my finger here and spin it right around. So this is just another way for you to try trimming up your half square triangles. When we come back, I'll show you how this block lays out. So I have eight of each of these pressed and they're in the direction. So the blue one needs to go toward the blue, the black one toward the black. And now you will construct these all exactly the same. So you will make eight of them that look like this. Now when you're doing that, one thing to take note is when you put these right sides together, the seams are in opposite directions. This seam is going in one direction, this seam is going the other direction. That's why I think it's so important that you follow the pressing solution so that you'll get really flat seams that way. After you've gone down that seam, you will press that toward the black piece or toward the background piece, let's call it, just like it says in the pressing solution. And then each one of these quadrants will take two of these units and they'll go together like this. No, that's not right. They'll go together like this. There it is. That's the way they're supposed to go together. And with the pressing solution, these seams, when you flip it over, the middle one will butt right together. The side ones, each of these seams, the one on the bottom is going to the left, the one on, I'm sorry, to my right, the one on the top is going to my left. I'm going to pin that. And then this one the same way. So you'll be able to get those seams to butt right together. Now I'm going to go to my sewing machine and sew this. So I showed you how to use the diagonal seam. So now when I'm sewing it, I'm going to keep the edge of my fabric just to the inside of that black line. And that'll give me the scant quarter inch I need. Now you can use the seam guides if you like using that too. So just want to show you many different options. And with my leader, cut it off. And when I go to press this, I'm going to do the seam separating that we did with the pinwheel. I'm going to do it on this block 
also. So if I take the right side and push it up and the left side, bring it down, those seams, the stitches in those seams will start to separate. Now sometimes if you can find your seam ripper, there it is, you can take and kind of pluck those seams out a little bit to get it lay a little bit flatter and I'll press them all like this. So once I have all four of these pressed, we'll be able to put the block together. And I got another trick to show you. So my quadrants are all constructed, so I have four that are exactly alike, but when I lay them down in the block, I'll make it so that the blue all come to the center, and then you have a little black point star going all the way around. Now, because of the pressing solution that we did when I flip this over onto the back side, you're going to see that the seams are already in opposite directions, which is going to make these rows go together nicely. So I can flip this one over, butt that seam together, and pin it in place. And I'll do these two rows like that. Now keep in mind, you don't have to do this block in quadrants, but I think that when I show you the next tap, next little tip, I think that you might want to give it a try. So I'll be right back with the block complete and show you that little trick. So I've got my quadrants together, but I haven't pressed this yet because I want you to see what I do on the back. So I know that you noticed that I did the seam separating when I put those four pieces together into the quadrant, but on a block like this, you can actually separate the seams at every intersection. So in the pattern, I'm going to actually circle all of those intersections. So you can, if you want, do the seam separating there. I tell you, it really will make your block nice and flat. So I loosened up all of those seams first so I could get them kind of pre-pressed a little bit. Then I'm going to use my iron, lots of steam, and then just to be sure that they stay that way, I'm going to take the steam off on my iron and I'm going to give it a little bit more of a spray sizing. I have never been afraid to over spray size my block. I like them to be very, very stiff. This is going to make the whole quilt top look so much nicer when I'm processing, when I'm putting everything together. And it also is going to make it a little easier to quilt because I do quilt all of my own quilts. When the blocks are stiffer and I'm sending that quilt through my quilting machine, they will just go through easier. And you think about, you know, pushing paper through as opposed to pushing flexible fabric through. It just makes it all a little bit easier. So now that I've done a little bit more spray sizing, check out that block. I think he looks great. Now, the intersection here is not perfect, but that doesn't bother me. Other than that, I think they all look pretty good. So that is the mosaic number three block. So I've gone through a lot of different techniques in the last four blocks with half square triangles. I think there's probably a dozen blocks in the Sunset Over Dublin um, book. So a lot of blocks for you to try these techniques out on. When we come back together next time, we'll be doing a square and a square block. Be sure you subscribe to the channel so that you know when we're going to be putting out a new video and give me a thumbs up. It just makes me feel good when you do that. All right. Have a great day.